Welcome to the third in our series of videos about using Emacs Power for Scala development. In this video, we're going to talk about actually editing Scala files with Emacs, and how Enzyme and the various other modes make this quick and easy. We're going to edit some Scala files in our sample project, Matrix Decider. As you can see, we've navigated to our file with Dir Tree, as we explored in our last video. Now, the first thing you'll notice when we look at this file is that there's some lines that are highlighted. These are lines that are longer than 120 characters, a limit that I've set in my Emacs configuration. You can change it easily to some other line size. While we're editing Scala files, we often need to select a specific section of code in order to perform some other editing operation on it, to copy it, to paste it, to refactor it, and so forth. Let's go down to our line 73 here and have a look at this log statement. Oops forward, I meant to say. So if I'm in the middle of this expression that I'm writing in my log statement here, I can use a number of different commands to actually select the line or portions of the line more easily than using the mouse or just using forward and backward with the arrow keys. So we can use, or oh, syntax highlighting is working now, I, we can use the um, enzyme command control C, control V, dot, or you can use a shortcut binding that I've set up to dot dot. That's the period button pressed twice quickly in rapid succession. That's a chord key, and I have the chord key plugin set up for Emacs. So, for example, if we say dot dot, you'll see that it selects the expression that we were in, and it offers type dot to expand again, type comma to contract. So we can press dot again, and we get the enclosing expression. If I said dot again, I'd have the whole line. That's more than I want. So I can press comma, and I'll come back down to the exact expression that I was interested in in the first place. We'll see examples of using that selection method later on. So for now, we'll cancel that. Now, Scala code is normally carefully indented to follow the flow and the structure of the actual code. Um, the thing that Emacs does to help us in editing there is to follow that structure with us and to do auto indenting. So for example, if I'm at the end of this line and I want to type a new line of code, it of course is indented appropriately. Now we can modify the indenting of a line as we need to, to reflect changes in the structure that Enzyme isn't necessarily picking up on and formatting automatically for us. So, for example, if we wanted to indent a specific section here, let's just go down a couple of lines. So, let's say this selection we want for some reason to indent further than the normal indenting. We can say Control U, Control X, Tab, and we've increased its indenting level. Now, we can then say, no, I actually only wanted a couple of those lines and just use Shift Tab to return specific lines to the normal indentation level. It doesn't just go back one level of indentation, it goes back to whatever the formatter says the normal level is. So in this case, I'm actually just going to put them all back where I started them. I can also, the, I still have my little experimental line here, I can also delete an entire line without necessarily being on the, uh, at the front of the line and using Control K uh, with another key chord that I've set up, it's Shift DL for delete line. That takes the entire line away without uh, having to take the remainder of the line. Enzyme also brings the ability to do completions to Emacs and Scala. So for example, if we are adding a new line, let's say uh, another log statement, I can hit tab after a dot and I get a prompt for all of the potential valid completions for the statement that I started to type. I can also do this halfway through a symbol and so forth. Then I can search using interactive search through all of the different alternatives that are presented and just press return to accept one and it prompts for all of the parameters as well. Beyond completion, Enzyme can also help us with imports. So for example, if we refer to user and we save, we see that Enzyme highlights that as an error. If we do our meta n, we'll see not found, type user. We have the ability to use Enzyme with control CRT to prompt for the appropriate import to resolve this class by looking at the remainder of the project. In this case, the first one is in fact the right one, so without having to search through the completions, I'll hit enter. Now, I haven't 
added the uh, parameters for the constructor for user, so it's still an error. But if I now go up, I can see that to the top of the class, I can see that Enzyme actually added an import for user to my class for me automatically. In addition to handling a single import, Enzyme can also reorganize our imports for us, eliminate unnecessary imports, import any classes that are required, and order them into a specified order. We can do that with Control C R O. Whoops, type the wrong button. C R O. And we can see in the other pane we're being prompted with the reorganized imports, and we can choose to confirm that or cancel, in which case it will make no changes for us. If we say confirm, then those changes are made, and we have everything organized the way it was shown. Uh, and as you can see, it's a more compact form, and it eliminated some unnecessary imports. In addition to import management, Enzyme can also supply us with a number of refactoring operations. Let's go down to line 22 here, and end our way over to that, and say forward onto the word log. I can use CRR to rename, I can rename log, let's say, to logger. I'm prompted for the proposed changes. If I agree with them, I say confirm, and logger has been renamed in all of its different locations. We can also extract and inline. Let's just scroll down here for a moment and find a good candidate right here on line 73. I believe we have a possibility. If we use our dot dot and then expand the context to reflect this entire string concatenation, we can say control C R M extract this into a method. So say criteria message might be the name of that method. Again, I see a proposed set of changes. I confirm, and then if I search for criteria message, you can see that the logger statement now is calling criteria message, and here's our new method. If we revert that change, we might actually choose, instead of a method in this case, to simply extract that to a local value. We can do that with Enzyme as well with control C R L selected the wrong part actually let's try that again there we go control C R L and we can say criteria message let's say uh, yes that's the change we want and as you can see we've just introduced a local value right alongside the usage the reverse is also possible. If I'm on the criteria message and I say CRI, then I can re-inline, or inline in the first place, if the code had started that way, that value without having to define an independent value. So both refactors are complementary and mirror images of each other. As we're working with a file and editing the code, we will sometimes get the code a little bit out of format and our parentheses may not line up and so forth. Rather than having to manually fix that, we can again say to Enzyme CVF <coughs> and it will auto format the entire file according to some set standards and you have a lot of parameters you can adjust to make it do things in a slightly different way. You'll notice our reformatting though did not fix our long line, the line that the cursor is on, line 67 there. And you'll see that it's highlighted just as we showed at the beginning of this video. What we can do, however, is use a couple of other shortcuts to allow us to easily split that line. So, for example, if we want to split the line there, I can use Shift-SL, press together, and then go down to the new line and use Back-Tab, Shift-Tab, to go back to the proper indentation setting. I didn't have to go back over each tab. I could, say, just reformat that one line back to the correct indentation. Now, that particular one actually still didn't make the line short enough, so I can move forward here to another point, let's say right at the map, for the sake of argument. Use my SL again, and then my tab to reduce the indentation again. Sometimes when we're editing, we'll also see situations where, for example, on line 76 here, <coughs> where we might actually want to overwrite, oops, as we might want to overwrite 
as opposed to insert. So for example, I want to change this to old decision. I could simply type over the new with the old. <clears throat> the shortcut key for that is OO, which allows you to turn on and off overwrite mode. Now I'm back in insert mode. When developing an application, we're often working with related files. Um, the most common case is a test and the class under test. Often they're in two separate files, of course, and you want, might want to work with both of them back and forth very easily. Uh, Emacs, not even Enzyme, but Emacs itself gives you a lot of multi-window capabilities. For example, Control x 2 will split the current window horizontally. This allows you to have, initially it shows the same buffer in both panes, but I can switch to another buffer and say, be editing my primary class here and the test for it back in the other window. Control XO allows me to usually easily switch between the windows. I can use Control X3 to vertically split a window, and I can go on for as many windows and panes uh, as I desire. Now, to get rid of them again, I can say Control x 0 to take the single window that I was in away, or I can say, no, I want to focus back on the one in the top pane. Control x one says remove all other panes except the one I'm currently in. All of the buffers are still open, but the pane is down to just the one window that I want to see. Now, if I split my window again horizontally, <clears throat> it's frequently the case that I'll want, for example, when I'm working with SBT, I may only want a few lines in the lower buffer, and I want the rest of the window available, the rest of the screen available for the top window. So I can resize those, again, all with keyboard commands. I can say Control x hat. That moved the upper window to a larger size by one line. Now, one line would be very tedious to do it many times. So let's say I wanted eight lines taller. I can say Control u 8 Control x hat and now it's eight lines taller. The same can be done, or something similar can be done, with vertically split windows. For example, Control x 3 to vertically split. And then I can use Control x left curly brace to make the one pane I'm in narrower as opposed to taller. So again, if I want to do it by a number of characters, Control u 10 Control x curly my left-hand pane now is 10 narrower than it was. Right curly brace would expand it larger in the horizontal direction. So, for example, Control u 10 Control x larger Now they're back to the same size. One other very valuable shortcut that is set up in Emacs for Scala is Command S, or Super S as it's known in Emacs, which allows you to save all modified buffers simultaneously uh, without having to prompt to save each buffer. Now, as you can see, I had a syntax error, so of course all the errors are highlighted immediately. Don't forget about all of the other key bindings we discussed in navigation that are very valuable when editing to be able to move around between windows, to scroll panes, to scroll in opposite directions. There's even a command uh, meta control V to scroll the opposite window, not the window I'm in. For example, control meta V in this case, although I'm in the top right hand pane, is scrolling the bottom pane. Please join me next time when we have a look at running the Scala REPL and SBT from within Emacs. And thank you.